Now, Ricky Tower's cables to the circus were detailed and specific. He was required by London Station to submit copious background on Irina. Names of former contacts, acquaintances inside Moscow Centre. There should be a file of some size, and we need to see it. That's circus material, George. I can only deliver from the minister. I know that look, George. I'm breaking into the circus, am I? Playing burglar bill. If you wouldn't mind, Peter. And while you're enjoying yourself, I shall visit Oxford to look up an old and invaluable friend. Please, don't take any unnecessary risks. <laughs> You must assume, Peter, the circus has the dogs on you 24 hours a day. Think of it as a foreign country. Hello, Bryant. Hello, nice to see you again, sir. Just a moment. Mr. Gwillem, sir. Strickland's expecting you. He'll meet you by the barrier on the fifth floor. All right. Thanks. It's about time someone oiled this thing, isn't it? We keep asking. You can talk till you're blue in the face. You really are a stranger, aren't you? It saves man eyes. Fantastic. Quite fantastic. So, oh, hello, hello, Bill. What the hell are you doing here, you pariah? He's got some French diplomatic courier he wants to buy, and he needs to wash some dirty money. That's a job for banking section, of course, so we're sorting out the tangle for him. He knows it has to be London Station cleared. He told me the papers were already routed to you. They're probably in your in-tray now, Bill. They had better be, Peter. Mind you, lock up the spoons. These scalp hunters will have the gold out of your teeth. Lock up the girls as well. If they'll let you. There we go, Bill. Keys of the city. London Station couldn't be in better hands. Everything's a lot tighter here these days, Willem. Hey, Lord, up, hold on. Have you seen bloody Bill anywhere? Indeed, I have seen Bill. We were having a brief word about a couple of things back down the corridor. He's wanted urgently. Immediately, Lord, actually. We put out an alert for him. I suspect he may well be on his way to you at this moment. Peter. Hello. Hi. 
Thanks for the glad hand. I did wipe the cow dung off my boots. What's the joke, Roy? A joke, Peter, old lad, just surprised to see you, that's all. We're used to having this floor to ourselves. Would you like to see my past, Toby? <laughs> How are you keeping? Oh, I wintered very well, thanks. You know what it's like living in the Brixton Rest House these days. Plenty of Ludo, ping pong. Normally, I'd be having my afternoon zizz at this time. Off with you, Peter. Don't waste Lauder's time. Uh, no, sir. Sorry, sir. Stop it! Stop it, boy! Don't you dunderhead! Flush, shut up! George Smiley! Oh, but you lovely darling man! You haven't come to sell me a, a hoover. You're my gorgeous George! Connie. Oh, George! Jingle, darling, could you possibly make it tomorrow? Oh, don't be cross, Jingle. It isn't often my oldest, oldest lover comes to see me. Oh, George, if only I'd seen you first. I'll give you a whole hour, all to yourself. Honestly, I will, darling. One of my dunderheads. I will teach. I don't know why. George, of all the lovely, darling men I ever knew. He walked flush. Did you see his shoes? Oh, bless you, darling. God bless. Mm. Did he walk alone, Flush? Not accompanied, were we? Quite alone, Connie. So, what does George want from Connie, the bad boy? Her memory. To go over some very old ground, Connie. Hear that, Flush? First they chuck us out with an old bone, then they come begging to us. I was the best head of research the circus ever had. Everyone knew that. And what did they say the day they gave me the chop? That personnel cow. You're losing your sense of proportion, Connie. It's time you got out into the real world. Well, I hate the real world. I like the circus of my, my lovely boys. Polyakov, Alexei Alexandrovich Polyakov, cultural attaché, Soviet Embassy, London. Born March the 3rd, 1922, in the Ukraine. Graduate of Leningrad State University. Height five foot ten. Colour of eyes green, colour of hair black. 
married but unaccompanied by wife and a six-cylinder Carla-trained hood, if ever I saw one. But don't tell Percy Allerline or Toby Esterhazy. Oh, no. Alexei Alexandrovich was as pure as the driven snow. He was Purcell White, wasn't he, Flush? And Connie's an old silly, because if she doesn't lay off and do as she's told, she'd have to pack her bags and go. He's come alive. Polyakov. Just as you predicted. Of course he has. Of course he has. I knew it in my bones. The day he arrived, I thought, hello, I'm going to have some fun with you. Tough as a button. Cultural attaché balls. Army written all over him. But not declared, George. Not a mention. Oh, he had a lovely voice. Mellow like yours. I used to play the tapes over and over just to bathe in it. Bottom picture too. <laughs> I just know. Not that we ever caught him at it. We might have done if Tobe had played along and offered him a bum or two, but Tiny Tobe wouldn't. Eight years. I watched Pretty Polly for eight years. Then last Remembrance Day, I got him. There he was, that smashing November morning at the wreath laying, and we photographed his medals, two gallantry and four campaign. Oh, yes. Alex Polyakov was a star soldier, just as I'd told them. I'm not a word. So I said to Toby, listen, you two-faced ferret. Ego has got the better part of cover, and that's nothing new. Now will you turn pretty Polly inside out for me, because Connie's little hunch has turned up trumps. And what did Toby Esterhazy say? Oh, I got the dead fish voice. Tell Percy Allerline Percy's in charge. And then? Not every ex-warrior's a Carla agent, says Percy. I said, listen, Percy. Polyakov's running an English mole. So I get the rude letter. Stop it or else. So I wrote at the bottom, yes, repeat, no. So, here we are. Flush and me. Please kiss me, George. Oh, halcyon days. Did I start the landslide, George? You were always dead right, Connie. And is George now picking up the pieces? Something of the sort. Poor loves. Trained to empire. Trained to rule the waves. Englishmen could be proud then. They could, George. Oh, God. I've taken away. Bye bye, world. If it's bad, George, don't come back. Promise? I want to remember you just as you were. My lovely, lovely boys. Promise. All right, Lord Roger, I just have to wait for the wheels to turn. I don't need a pass to use the gents, do I? <laughs>
The pages have been removed with a razor blade. No mention whatever of Ricky Tyre's cables from Lisbon. No Irina, no Boris, no Tar. There's a note scribbled on the next page which says all inquiries to head of London station. It's in Toby Esterhase's handwriting. The janitor's attendance list has also been removed. Nothing to tell us who was duty officer that night. Nor even who was in the building. Connie's appraisal matches the story Irina gave Ricky Tarr. The implications, the indications, are that Carla has managed to build himself a card of senior men placed about the globe who work directly and exclusively for him at Moscow Center. Polyakov is Carla's executant in London. You offer that as a working hypothesis? Operation Witchcraft, that vital flow of Russian intelligence which happily came Alaline's way. Supplementary estimates to the Treasury. Special accommodation in London. Wider exploitation. See also Secret Annex. May I see it? The Minister keeps it in his personal safe. Do you know the combination? Certainly not. What's the title of this unobtainable document? It doesn't have one. It's highly secret, and we've done everything humanly possible to keep the readership to a minimum. The supplier of the witchcraft material is our old friend Merlin. Does the file give his identity? Oh, don't be ridiculous. The minister wouldn't want to know, and Alaline wouldn't want to tell him. What does wider exploitation mean? I refuse to be interrogated, George. I entirely fail to see why I should waste your time pursuing this line of inquiry. By rights, I should have you specially cleared before I let you see any of this. Witchcraft cleared? Yes, George. Do we have a list of people who've been cleared in that way? I hope you're not going fey, George. Please, stick with the primary problem. The mole, Gerald, instead of rootling around in extraneous matters. This is no time to be whimsical. Oh, are you off? You won't forget Predo, will you? Anything at all you can get on him, even the scraps would help. He has a point, George. Witchcraft and Merlin. Polyakov and the Mole. Predo getting himself shot up on some wild goose chase of controls in the rural charms of Czechoslovakia. You think it all connects? I think, Peter, I'm not the first to make this journey of exploration. I believe control was here before me. He might even have made the full distance. But for the bullets in Predo's back, there are three of them and Alaline. Control's words. He meant Operation Witchcraft, of course. Merlin's minders, or inventors, or programmers, or marionettes, or what? Why was Control always so hostile to Alaline? Percy wasn't a complete fool. Percy can flirt, Peter. And Control hadn't reckoned on the power of the Alaline lobby. Who were they? Golfers. Golfers and conservatives. That's what Control said to me. I got a call from Control one day, very sharp, very combative. George, come in here or there'll be bloodshed. <clears throat> Brother Percy is trying to twist my tail. Take a look at this nonsense. <clears throat> Top level Soviet naval dispatch. Specially prepared for the Soviet High Command. Isn't it, Percy? An appreciation of a naval exercise in the Medlin or Black Sea, of which our sailors have been screaming for details. Haven't they, Percy? Topicality is always suspect. Yes, George. Would you like to repeat that for Percy? Who made the translation? God made it, didn't he, Percy? Ask him anything he won't tell you. Shore to sea strike power, radio activation of enemy alert procedures. This is hardly my territory. Don't let that worry you. Total ignorance of subject matter doesn't bother Percy. 
Whose initials are these? Zarov, Admiral, Black Sea Fleet. What do our own evaluators say? They've not seen it, and what's more, they're not going to. However, my brother in Christ Lily of Naval Intelligence has passed a preliminary opinion, has he not, Percy? Percy showed it to him last night. Over a pink gin, was it, Percy? At the Admiralty. Note that, George. They battened down the hatches and bunged up the portholes for Percy. Brother Lily telephoned me half an hour ago to congratulate me. He believes this material to be neither a plant nor chicken feed, but genuine gold dust, and he seeks our permission to... Percy's, I suppose I should say, to apprise his fellow sea lords of its conclusions. Quite impossible. It's for his eyes only, at least for another couple of weeks. It's so hot, you see, George. But where does it come from? Who's the case officer? You'll enjoy this. Source Merlin has access to the most sensitive levels of Soviet policy making. We've dubbed his product witchcraft. And ask him who we are, George. Merlin is the fruit of a long cultivation by certain people in the service. People who are bound to me as I am to them. People who are not at all entertained by the failure rate about this place. Been too much blown, too much lost, wasted, too many scandals. I've said so many times that I might as well have talked to the wind for all the heed he'd paid me. He means me, George. The ordinary principles of tradecraft and security have gone to the wall in this service. It's all divide and rule, stimulated from the top. Me again. We're losing our livelihood, our self-respect. We've had enough. We've had a bellyful, in fact. Please. Thank you. And like everybody who's ever had enough, he wants more. Percy Allerline would sell his mother for a knighthood and this service for a seat in the House of Lords. Suppose Merlin's genuine. Suppose Merlin would pick Percy. It seems somebody has. I gather Percy's under the impression he picked himself and a whole team. You're sure he left you out, are you, George? What are you going to do about it? Depends on it. I'll wait for it to show itself. In the meantime, I see nothing to deal with, except Percy's envious eye on my chair. And I've put my thumb in that optic before. Tuesday again? No, Percy. Toby? Right. This time. Oh, Lord. I thought it would be half over by now. You've got a rabbit to pull out of your hat today, Percy. You've got that Britain can make it look about you. Very intimidating. Should we have brought our sandwiches? I'll be brief, Bill, so long as I'm not obstructed. I'm sorry. Traffic. <clears throat> sort of walk. I think you and Percy between you are contriving to keep me off the streets. They're all here now, sir. Would you go in, please, gentlemen? How often do I have to emphasize the extreme sensitivity of the source of the witchcraft product? I must insist there is no existing method of Whitehall distribution to meet the case. Do I have to remind you of that disgraceful incident when an undersecretary, albeit overworked, so be it. But the fact remains 
the man actually gave his dispatch box key to his personal assistant. We simply cannot afford that kind of ludicrous insecurity when we are handling witchcraft. Now, I have already discussed the problem with Lily of naval intelligence, and he is prepared to put at our disposal a special main reading room in the Admiralty main building, where witchcraft material can be seen by our customers and watched over by a senior janitor of this service. Wouldn't you rather have security call? The reading room will be known for cover purposes as the conference room of the Adriatic Working Party, the AWP room for short. <coughs> Thank you. Customers with reading rights will not have passes since these can be too accessible, like keys. Instead, they will appear on a special list with their photographs and they will identify themselves personally to my janitor. Whose janitor, Percy? Well, he's already got his own personal wizard. The odd commissioner seems modest enough domestic star. <coughs> Allowing that all this is necessary. Essential. My minister will want to know a lot more about the cost. He wanted to appear to be borne by the Admiralty, even if you have to reimburse coverage. Yes, of course. The reading room will have to be extensively rebuilt to begin with. Now, I would like to call your attention to the Foreign Office comment on the most recent witchcraft product, and I quote, this document sheds an extraordinary sidelight on Soviet aggressive thinking. Does that mean they like it, Percy? Do you like it, Bill? It's from the very heart of your territory. The fact is, in 25 years, I haven't laid hands on anything of that quality. And unless I'm extremely mistaken, nor have our American cousins. Anyone taking that stuff to Washington could drive a very hard bargain indeed. Early days, Bill. Agreed, George. But if Merlin maintains the standard of that, we're going to be able to buy whatever's in the Yank shop. I don't think control is going to play. That would rule me out as well, of course. Percy will get his reading room. Yes. Yeah. And after that, I suppose anything's possible. Did you want to ask me something, Mr. Smiley? I'm afraid he's not seeing anyone at all today. Again, I'm being asked why he's cancelled the Tuesday conferences. You know I can't add anything to his memorandum, Mr. Smiley, even for you. Even if I could, Mr. Smiley. No, of course. I was rather hoping before I set off on this Hong Kong trip he wants me to make. Well, when I get back, Perhaps you'll have got through that little lot. And now there's a witchcraft committee. The minister's in the chair. Alaline's vice chairman. Merlin's become an industry. It's the industry and I'm not employed. You won't even read Alaline's reports. I haven't time buying their way in with counterfeit money. Tell them that. Tell them anything. I need time. There are three of them and Alaline. Sweat them, George. Tempt them. Bully them. Any damn thing. Give them whatever they eat. I need time.
Willkommen zu selber, Mr. Smiley. How are your children, Toby? Doing terribly well, thank you, George. The boy is at Westminster, have I got that right? Your daughter's probably left school by now, has she? First year medical student. Loves it. Good for her. Toby, I have to ask you this. Sorry to come prying. Your department's a long way behind with its worksheets. Two months almost. Now, why is that? It's not lamplighter style. Oh, we're not infallible, George. Two months. Well, I won't question it. Is it terribly important? Of course, if you say it is, then I'll see it dealt with, of course. The question is, why, Toby? Let me be blunt. Not your style, George. I'm allowed to say that, surely. I am, after all, one of your oldest protégés. Vienna was a long time ago. You haven't perhaps been using your staff for any special jobs lately, have you? Either at home or abroad. I mean the kind of special jobs which, for good reasons of security, you haven't felt able to mention in your returns. Who would I do that for, George? You know, in my book, that's completely illegal. Well, if Percy Alleline, for example, ordered you to do something and not recorded, that would put you in a difficult position. What sort of something? Clear a foreign letterbox, prime a safe house, watch someone's back, spike an embassy. It's all lamplighter work. If Percy told you to do it, you might quite reasonably assume he was acting on instructions from the fifth floor. I do like the service, George. I may be sentimental about it, but I prefer to stay in it. Now, you understand that, you of all people. My problem is promotion. I mean, the absence of it. I have so many years seniority that I feel actually quite embarrassed when these young fellows ask me to take orders from them. Who, Toby? Which young fellows? Roy Bland? Percy, would you call Percy young? Who? When you're overdue for promotion and working your fingers to the bone, anyone looks young who is above you on the ladder. Have you been taking orders? You know the line of command, George. Perhaps control could move you up a few rungs. Well, you know, actually, I'm not sure he's able to these days. Are you? So what's the deal? There isn't a deal, Roy, really. It's just that Control feels the present situation is unhealthy. He doesn't like to see you getting mixed up with a cabal. Frankly, nor do I. So what's the deal? What do you want? What about 5,000 quid out the reptile fund, for starters? And a house and a car. And the kid to eat it. Your father would turn in his grave. Let him rotate, the old commie thug. If there's no deal, George, you'll have to tell Control he can get stuffed. I've paid, you see, you know that. I don't know what the hell I've bought with it, but I've paid a packet. Poznan, Budapest, Prague, back to Poznan. Have you ever been to Poznan? Sofia, Kiev, two bloody nervous breakdowns and still between the shafts. That's big money at any age, even yours. Oh, no one can deny that, Roy. And you brought me in, remember? If you think I'm going to the bad, you've only got yourself to blame. You're an educated sort of a swine. 
An artist is a bloke who can hold two fundamentally opposing views and still function. Who dreamed that one up? Scott Fitzgerald. Well, Fitzgerald knew a thing or two. And I'm definitely functioning. As a good socialist, I'm going where the money is. As a good capitalist, I'm sticking with the revolution because if you can't beat it, spy on it. Don't look like that, George. It's the name of the game these days. You scratch my conscience, I'll drive your jag, right? No. Did you get that from Hayden? Is that one of Bill's jokes about materialist England? The pigs in clover society. Don't you like it? Not much. Of course there are competitive and acquisitive instincts in Western society. But they are offset against other concerns which you won't find in... Poznan, Budapest, Kiev, Sofia. Tell me all about it, George. I'm just saying that's England now, man. All you have to do is look out the bloody window. You're seen with Bill Hayden a great deal these days. Jealous, George? You've got his job. Your control's high, Chamberlain. What more do you want? Long as it lasts. I thought that was Roy's job. No, Bland makes the translations. You write the covering reports. They're typed on your machine. The material's not cleared for typists. Percy Alleline won't do. Is that the premise? Which means that Merlin won't do either. Poor old Control. He isn't a pickle. Merlin would do if he were my source, wouldn't he? Dazzling bloody Bill here butted along and said he looked a whacking big fish and wanted to play him alone and sod the expense. What would happen then? Control would say, that's very nifty of you, Bill boy. You do it just the way you want, Bill boy. Have some filthy jasmine tea. He'd be giving me a medal now, instead of sending you snooping round corridors. <sighs> we used to be rather a classy bunch. Why are we so vulgar these days? He thinks Percy is on the make. So he is. I also want to be head boy. And Toby and Roy have designs on your spot. Since when was ambition an offense in our beastly outfit? Is Anne at home? Send her out to play while you grill your old buddy. Who runs him, Bill? Percy? Who do you think? Carla runs him. Stands out a mile. Lower class bloke with upper class sources. Must be a bounder. Bill? Percy is sold out to Carla. Any possible explanation. Percy is our house mole. I meant who runs Merlin? Who is Merlin? What's going on? This is a callow, isn't it? Nice, very nice. Bill. Doesn't anyone think my nose should be out of joint? I'm supposed to be in charge of the Russian target. Given it my best years. Set up networks, talent spotters, all mod cons. You chaps on the top floor have forgotten what it's like to run an operation where it takes you three days to post a letter and you don't even get an answer for your trouble. That's hardly fair to control. You've heard him a hundred times on how he detests the glamour boy agents who hog the budget. How he hates miracles if they put the bread and butter networks out of focus. It's a pity he doesn't have the same hatred of failure. Has he lived with it too long? Face it, George. It's Percy. Percy's success. It's throne control. And me, a bit. Trouble is, my networks haven't been good enough. This is new. I fancy this very much. 
Anne gave it me. Making amends? Probably. Must have been quite a sin. How is she? George, cut the cord. Get away from control. He's cut you out of his life for weeks on end. Dispatching you about with errands a probationer could handle. What's he doing up there? He's been going through files of old circus folk heroes from year minus one, half of them under the earth already. Sniffing out the dirt to see who was pink, who was a queen. He's given us all up, hasn't he? I don't think that's true. Senile paranoia. Control's going potty. And he's also dying. It's just a question of which gets him first. And within six months of Bill Hayden's diagnosis, Control was indeed dead. And what killed him? Operation Witchcraft or Operation Testify? Neither. That's not been melodramatic. Control would disapprove. He died of old age, a little early. But Testify destroyed his function in life, which was a form of murder. I don't have nearly enough on Testify, Peter. Would you please, uh... Of course, George. 